Today we're installing and showing you our 10-3009 tank. This is a passenger side tank for the 170 and 144 Sprinter. It's a 16 gallon tank. You can see it has a heat shield here, so it stays away from the DPF when it gets hot. If you notice the tank looks a little rough, it's because this is our prototype. It's gonna look smooth and the corners are all gonna be nice and radius as a finished product. Um, an overview to this tank is one will show you the level sensor. We have a level sensor on uh, 1.5 inch MPT on the top for your level sensor. This is a seven inch level sensor from KUS. It's um, really perfect for this tank. Um, again, it is a KUS and it's part number S5U7. Ends up being perfect after it's all the way screwed into the tank. We have a three quarter inch um, MPT on the top for your vent. So before install, you want to put your 90 degree vent on here. We have an inch and a half on the top here. If you're using this as a waste tank, you need to um, fill into the tank. We have a half inch MPT right here. Then we also have a half inch MPT on the bottom and an inch and a half right next to it. If you're using this as a drain, um, you can also use this as a, as a fresh tank. This could be your feed. Um, this could be your fill if you're doing a gravity, gravity fill. And then this could be your um, feed into the tank if you're doing a pressure fill and this would remain as your vent. Um, so, and the tank comes with two straps and it comes with these, these studs. So we already have two of the studs installed. They just literally hook into these holes and you can identify which holes these need to go into by putting the tank into position and seeing where these little slots in the tank line up. We include two different kinds of studs, a longer stud and a shorter stud. Longer stud, goes on the outside and the shorter stud goes on the inside. Now, um, I guess before I grab a hand and get this installed, you'll see the tank is sloped inward. So when you're looking at it from the outside, we don't want you to see the tank, but we also want to get as big a tank as possible. So we have it sloped inward and we also have a heat shield right up against the exhaust so we can get closer to the exhaust than normal. So before, you know, if a, a normal tank would end right here, we went all the way to the outside so we could get more capacity out of this uh, passenger side water tank. Now we'll get this tank lined up and into position. It is a little tricky. And uh, we're gonna focus on the passenger side stud, making sure it fits all the way through. I got my side in. There we go. A good sign when you see threads. Now we'll grab these plates as well as a uh, the 19 millimeter So like uh, my partner just said, the chamfered end goes inward. You guys already have seen enough of me, so to make the video quick, we're just going to use air.
and we could back these off just a little bit. We have it tank really tight right now. And now to show you the overview of the tank, you can see it sloping inward. And then also you can see, I'll take the camera. We gave you plenty of clearance on the top. So if you're running a, a wire harness on top, there is plenty of space to still feed your wire harness. We even gave you more space here. But even on the top, you might have to spread the wire loom um, a little thinner to get it through. There's plenty of space on top. And the vent is on the other side of this cross member. So if you have your 90 degree vent, it still clears that cross member. And um, that's about it. I'll take you for a view over here. You can really see how it slopes. And you can also see our heat shield here. It's based off of the tank. Let us know if you have any questions or if uh, you need any help. We have interior tanks. We also have our driver's side tank, which is a 22 gallon. And then back here, we have our spare tire tank as well. Thank you for watching.